In this video, I'm gonna show you the three simple steps to quickly and easily get that cinematic film look inside of Premiere Pro 2022. Now this is a lot easier than you think it is if you follow along the steps that I'm gonna share with you in this tutorial. So let's jump onto my laptop and let me show you how to get that cinematic film look. So inside of Premiere Pro, we've got the footage that we want to use already. The first thing we're going to do is add an adjustment layer. So we're going to head over here and we've got an adjustment layer created already. If you don't have an adjustment layer yet, you can click on new item and then select adjustment layer and make sure that the settings are the same as the sequence that you're currently using. So we're currently using 1920 by 1080 and 23.976 frames per second. Once you're happy, click OK. That'll create your adjustment layer and then you can just drag your adjustment layer and drop it on top of your timeline. Now the great thing about adjustment layers is it can cover multiple clips. So we've just got one clip here, but you can add an adjustment layer if you look at the edit that we currently have here. So we have a whole lot of clips there and there's our adjustment layer that covers every single clip inside of the edit. So if we go back in here, we can then trim the adjustment layer just to cover the section that we want it to and then select your adjustment layer and then we're going to head into the color tab. Now the first thing that I like to do inside of the color tab is make sure the exposure is right. Now this is just a basic correction, but it does make a big difference if you get your exposure right. So we're looking at our Lumetri scopes. If you don't have that, make sure you've got it on the left hand side here so you can see your waveforms and what they're looking like. Then the first step in the cinematic look is to go into your curves and add a basic S curve. So we're gonna have a point at the bottom about a quarter of the way and a point at the top about three quarters of the way and we're just going to get a nice basic s curve and you can see straight away what a difference that s curve makes to our image the next thing i want to do is to desaturate parts of the video that are overpowering it so you can see this yellowy orangey wood color is overpowering our video right now now Alan is our main focus for this clip, so we don't want those other sections to overpower what we want the focus to be on our clip. So that's where the hue saturation curves come in. Now you can select a color by putting three dots and putting the middle dot in and around the color that you want. And then you can drag down to desaturate or drag up to increase the saturation. So have a look at that desaturated and increasing the saturation. Now, if we go Command Z to go back, if you're not sure exactly where you should put your points, you can use this eyedropper and then select basically the area that you have and it'll create those dots for you. So you can desaturate and increase the saturation for that particular part. So we're just gonna decrease that saturation slightly so that most of our focus is still on Alan in our clip. And let's have a look at how that looks so far. Okay, so that's the first step that we want to do in order to get closer towards that cinematic look. The next thing we want to do is we want to create a bit of contrast. Now, so many films use that orange and teal look, and that's roughly what we're going to work off for this video. So we're going to head down to the HSL secondary, click on the eyedropper, and we're going to select our skin tones. Now to check what you have selected, we can click on this tick box next to color and gray, and it's going to show you what you have selected. So we haven't hit the right kind of skin tone there, so you can unselect that, grab the eyedropper, and start selecting different parts of his skin to slowly increase your selection. If you aren't getting a good selection like we are, then all you need to do is leave this tick box and you can play with these sliders to see what you need to do in order to include more of the selection. So you can see our skin tones are starting to show up slowly there and there we're getting a lot more. Now you don't want to overdo it and select too much of your image, but you just want to roughly get the tones that are around the skin tone so you have a good selection. Then we want to refine the selection. So we want to add a bit of denoise and it just blurs the edge. So it's not a harsh, harsh selection and a little bit of blur to get those edges. Now well, that's pretty good. And then what we're going to do is next to the color and gray, there's this little invert button. So you can invert your selection. So we have selected everything other than the skin tones. There are a few more parts of the image 
that are going to be part of that, but that's okay for now. Now we want to add teal into everything that is not our skin tones. The reason why we don't want teal in the skin tones is it makes you look really, really weird and strange. You look like a cartoon and we definitely don't want that. So we're gonna add teal into everything that is not part of our skin tones. And we don't wanna overdo it, but we want to add a little bit and then unselect there and you can see how our image is looking. Now, if you feel like you've overdone it, you can head back into the basic correction and add a little bit of warmth back into the overall image. So don't overdo it, otherwise it's gonna look terrible, but you can add a little bit just to balance it out. So you have a nice bit of orange and balancing it with that teal. And the last part of the second step is to add a little bit of a vignette. What the vignette does is it draws your focus into the center of the image. Now don't go and overdo it, you can have a circle for a video but we want to darken the corners a little bit so that it does draw our focus into our main subject. And then if you wanna add a few tweaks to the image, you can, so you can add a bit more black and a bit more white just to draw it out. Increase that contrast a little bit, drop those highlights. These are just small tweaks that if you want to make to your image, you can. We can see if we want to add a little bit more warmth, we can. Now the final step to make your video look cinematic is to add the black bars. Now this is the feel that you get from watching films. So it's a really cool way to add a little bit more of that cinematic feel. So we're going to head back into the editing tab and we're going to drop another adjustment layer on the top. We're going to trim that adjustment layer and then we're going to head over to the effects tab and grab our crop effect drop our crop effect on the top adjustment layer and then we're going to head into the effect controls and we're going to add 12 to the top and 12 to the bottom Now that's going to give us our black bars and we're going to see if we want to adjust our image at all we can move the motion and position if we want to move it up or move it down so that it fits with those black bars now and let's have a look at how our cinematic video clip looks one power tip to get that cinematic feel is to slow down the speed of your footage. So we've slowed down this clip to 50% and that movement in slow motion is a great way to make the viewer feel like it is a lot more cinematic while they're watching. Let's play it through one more time and we're very happy with how that has turned out. If you have any questions or queries about getting that cinematic look inside of Premiere Pro, then let us know in the comment section down below. If you like this video and it added value to you and you're excited about getting that cinematic look in your videos going forward, then smash that like button. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.